Hello, everybody. Welcome to our talk on hacking your misconfigured Kubernetes cluster. My name is Eric Smalling. I am a senior developer advocate at Sneak. A uh, little bit about myself, you know where I'm coming from. I'm about 30 year developer, uh, the last decade or so consulting around the DevOps space. Uh, I've been working with Docker since freaking 2013. Um, my info is all on the slide. You can take a look at it. Uh, hit me up on Twitter or LinkedIn, wherever you want. Uh, but let's get right into it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how the combination of application vulnerabilities and misconfigurations can allow an attacker to spread the blast radius of their attack. This is a pattern that almost every major exploit of recent years has followed. An application vulnerability gives the attacker an initial foothold, and then the application infrastructure level misconfigurations allow that attacker to spread into other parts of your system. Today, we're going to be talking about this in the context of Kubernetes. We'll walk through how we can go from exploiting an app vulnerability to basically owning your cluster. Okay, let's set the scene here real quick. So say I'm a hacker and I found a vulnerable application on the internet. I don't know much else about it other than it has a particular vulnerability. For the purposes of this demonstration, the application is a mockup. Now it has a remote command execution vulnerability, which is going to allow me to run commands directly on the server where the application is running. This is a simple flask app, but the, these kinds of vulnerabilities do exist in the wild, such as in Tomcat or other platforms. This kind of vulnerability allows an attacker to pass malformed or specially crafted HTTP requests to allow them to run commands directly on the server. Okay, so as we go along, as I said, the blast radius is going to get bigger and bigger as we exploit this cluster more and more. And we're going to keep track of that on this graph, uh, which kind of goes up as things get worse throughout the hack. Okay, so here we are at my desktop, and you're looking at the front page of this, this mocked up Flask app we've written uh, that has a remote command execution exploit in it. Now, this is fake, but this kind of an exploit really can happen in app servers or other things like that, uh, or your own code. So let's take a look at this. Now, I'm going to issue, a first thing I'm going to check on is I'm going to issue an env, ENV command. Uh, this is useful because we can find out what environmental variables are set up for your process. That can give us a lot of hints about the, the environment we're running in, right? So we have a lot of Kubernetes stuff showing up. So we believe we're in a Kubernetes cluster because that's a lot of evidence there, which means we're in a container. Um, so the first thing we see here is we have the Kubernetes port. That's the API server endpoint for this pod. So it could connect if it needed to. Um, another thing we see is a bunch of web admin uh, service host ports. This is the service info. So this is running on port 5000, it looks like. That's also kind of interesting. So let's take this. I'm going to leave that tab open for reference and open another tab. And we're going to change the command now to IP percent 20A. Uh, so we ran IP A on the box, basically. And sure enough, there's our pod. IP address, and we know that we're in a range 24, so we kind of know the, the range our pods are going to be in. That's that's good to know as well. Okay, so what do we know so far? We know that we can, on port 80, hit a Kubernetes cluster that is exposing a service that appears to be on, on port 5000. So we probably got an ingress there that's mapping us to port 80. Uh, we know the internal IP address of the API server, and we now know the IP address of the pod as well. So let's go back. What else can we uh, glean from this? Okay, so I run a cat command and I'm spitting out the uh, token, the service account token for this pod that got auto mounted in. Now, what that means is that somebody has left a default here for the service. Uh, what is it? Let's start looking at my notes. Um, the auto mount service account token. Um, you could set that to false. And because we didn't, this automatically gets mounted and is available to the process or anyone else attacking the box. So let's add that to our list of things. So our, our timeline of Dune is expanded. We've got a credential we've found now, which is the pod token. So we'll go back here and... Okay, so two things I just found out now. Curl is available in here. That's good to know because that's useful. I could use that to pull down my own scripts. Um, all sorts of stuff you can do with curl. But I've also uh, found that the endpoints API is available to my user. This is not uncommon. So what I've done here is I, I've curled the API server endpoint, which we found out from our environmental variable, and I'm hitting the endpoints endpoint of that endpoint, <laughs> that API, 
and I fed it the token for the pod service account user, along with the CA cert that lives in the same folder. And sure enough, we get this back. We can see that this is Kubernetes. So this is the front end of the control plane, and uh, which is expected. And the that endpoint has this IP address. Now, if this was in a, this is running in a kind cluster. If this was in a managed or a, like a, a large scale Kubernetes cluster, that would be the external IP. So when you are using a managed uh, cloud provider, for instance, and they they give you a kube config that has an IP address or a host name or something in it to connect to, along with your token, this is where that IP would be would match, right? So this is the control plane public IP. So we've got quite a bit of information now. We now what else do we know now? We have the internal IP internal IP, and we can hit it. We know that uh, which we now know has permissions that I that token had the permission to access the endpoints API, which allowed us to gather some more information about the cluster. So let's see if we can get access, you know, actually get into the cluster from outside now without having to use the uh, the exploit. So first thing I'm going to do is I've got a setup script here that and I'm gonna come back over here. I need to get that token. So here's the pods token, service accounts token, I should say. Let's come back over to my shell, paste that. And like I said, this is a kind cluster. I know this is running on my local host at 6443, as opposed to what we would have found out otherwise. Now let's take, now that's, that's created a kube config for me, is all it did. I'm gonna say export the kube config Big to this file that just got created called demo kube config. Now let's try to get some pods and see what we can do. I have K alias to kube CTL because I don't like to type. And we got an error, but it's not um, not a useless error. It's telling us, hey, that's forbidden. You can, uh, this account, our account is web admin, and we are in the secure namespace. Good to know. Uh, and it cannot get pods for the default namespace. But we now have a namespace name. We know that uh, there's a secure web uh, namespace. And <laughs> let me clarify that. There is a namespace named secure. Namespaces are not a security boundary. They are not a, a it's up to you to secure your namespaces with whatever we'll talk about in a minute. But um, just so you know, that doesn't mean it's secure. It's just named that. But sure enough, when I pull pods with the in that namespace, I, with this token, can see them. And I see the web admin uh, pod has uh, made itself known. Let's. I wonder what else I could do with this. So let's do a, a kubectl auth. Uh, can I list? And we need to pass the token to it. I think it's still in the face buffer. So in the default um, uh, namespace, I can we knew we could get at the endpoints. We figured that out, but I really don't have a lot of anything else. What can I do in this secure namespace? Ah, cool. Like expected, I pretty much can do anything. Excuse me. In the uh, in the secure namespace, so all these herbs are available to me. Um, just so you, there's actually a, a really cool uh, plugin for kubectl called. Um, access matrix it's part of the crew plugin setup uh let me show you that it's kind of cool let me access matrix and so it, it gives me a nice list of all the resources and then my privileges on them and in the as we would expect in default i don't have much of anything but if i add the secure namespace to it spell it right Sure enough, I have a lot of access. So just another view on top of it, a little more detailed, getting into uh, what I have access to. Okay, so let's kind of review where we are. So what do we know now? So we, we have uh, the knowledge of namespaces. So we know that we are seeing an application that's running in a namespace named secure. There is a default namespace. And we also know that um, the role that's been set up is not very restrictive. Um, as far it's not it's not stopping me from figuring what I've you know what what I have out here. 
um, it's likely bound just to the secure namespace. Uh, that's a, that's a common pattern when when you see uh, a, a pod security policy and a, and a role applied. Often they apply it to the namespace. The, the application developers come up with it, right? They apply it to the application that they're they're running in the namespace that they're running their application in. Um, and there's a good chance the the name default namespace is, doesn't have permissions set up unless the cluster ops have, have uh, done something there. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, let's hold on that. So next, uh, let's see if we can get a shell on this on the pod we've compromised. So let's get pods and secure again, just so we can get the name of it right. Cool. So now we're going to exec in to in the namespace secure to the web admin pod and we're going to run bash yes we can that doesn't surprise me uh let's do a who am i i'm the web admin user okay that's fair uh, i'm not running as root that's a it's a good sign uh for the owners that's but um can it become root no okay that's good for them um hmm, i wonder can i create a file Yes, it looks like I can. Sure enough, I'm able to create files. So that means I'm not in a read-only root file system. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, by the way, uh, timeline, we know we know our role gives too many permissions. Uh, and we were able to get out to the endpoints and stuff. But um, we know that our read-write file system is in play. Uh, by default, your container runtime engine, whether it's Docker, Containerd, Cryo, whatever, it's going to put that read-write layer at the top above your image layers and uses copy on write and that's a bunch of details you can get into uh elsewhere but uh people wonder why why would you want to do that why would you want to read only why wouldn't you want to rewrite file system um well for this reason as a bad actor i now can create files i can pull files down from the internet i can change configurations i can clean up after myself i can delete you know evidence of my my uh involvement uh all you need to do to get away from that <laughs> all you need to do is set your read-only root file system to true in your pod security context in your container uh, the problem is your application might not run if it needs read write file system so you might be some refactoring to your app you need or maybe you can shunt off the the read write access it needs to a volume uh, maybe it's ffs who knows uh, but if you can it's a it's a great security um, uh, mitigation effort to make things read write uh, uh, read write false or read only true <laughs> sorry um uh, it's just it's just a good idea so let's go back here um so i can't so we'll keep that in mind uh we can write to the file system um let's see next let's try to run let's see if we can run another pot of our own i've got one let me get out of here through my screen i've got a simple Demo YAML uh, root pod, right? So I've got this simple pod. It just runs Alpine, which is a root user by default, and it just sleeps. So just we're just going to see if we can start this up. I demo YAMLs root pod, and this is in the secure namespace. API server took it, but let's take a look here. Yeah, sure enough. It's not running though. Um, okay, describe secure pod root pod. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, just as I would expect. So run is non-root is being enforced. So there is a pod security policy here or something that's that's doing that. Uh, it's not letting me run as root. That, that's fair. Um, Got to try. Right, so what we know is that we have a pod security policy in place, at least in the secure namespace. So now let's come back out here. Let's deploy something that's not root, but we have a non-root privilege. Let's see if we can deploy a privileged container, which would be bad. Privileged containers are pretty, pretty frowned upon unless you're doing something really unique. Uh, so we're going to deploy that into secure namespace. 
and sure that's forbidden right away um pod security policy right there that so it is a pod security policy and it's most likely what's causing the root thing to not work same thing here so um that's 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 fair so now um how else could we get a root user well i have another manifest we can try demo yamls non-root non-priv and uh, this one, same image. This is by but Matt Jarvis is my colleague um, here at Sneak. He, he crafted this sneaky <laughs> image. Um, this is going to run as a non-root user. Uh, it's not asking to be privileged, so that seems pretty fair. Um, it's bad enough that I can deploy this, right? But um, at least they stopped those. Let's see. Demo, non-root, non-priv, YAML secure namespace and it's creating so that's a good sign for me let's wait till it comes up here okay it's up um i'm not gonna exec into it i'm gonna do something else let's do a port forward i had we, we wrote this so i know what's in this thing so sneaky and oops port forward in the secure namespace sneaky port 8080 okay so we have a port forward going let's go back here now hit localhost 8080 and i've got a little go tty running inside that container so i have a shell that's running in that container and I'm the sneaky user at the moment, but now I'm the root user. All right, so how how do you think I did that? Well, what it comes down to is pod security policies. Uh, you need to be explicit if you're gonna use these things. And, and, and honestly, uh, people are moving to OPA now in Rego, so the same things apply there, kind of, sort of, but if you're using a pod security policy, a lot of people will do the things we saw here. They'll, they'll list, don't let it run as root, don't let a privileged container come up. But they'll fail to say, don't allow allowed, don't allow privilege escalation. Because honestly, the documentation is a little ambiguous on this one. Uh, you would think that that's redundant. That if, if I'm saying no root, no privilege, that I wouldn't also, also would not be able to, to escalate my privilege in the container. But you can. And um, unfortunately, it, it is confusing, and there's actually you know documentation and, and blogging out there that that says it wrong. Um, so just know that that you can, you need to set allow privilege escalation um, false so that uh, it doesn't happen to you. Uh, let's go back to here. So uh, we've got another piece of information. We have some permissions here where the PSP didn't allow disallow that. Uh, another thing that I didn't talk about that's actually kind of interesting, I was able to get my image from public internet image registry. So that means that our network is not limiting me to only use images from their, you know, this company's registries or there seems to be no limit. If I can download that, I can pretty much do anything. So that's that's interesting. Let's talk about networks. So I'm gonna, let me get out of root for a second. Um, are you familiar with Nmap? Nmap is a tool for uh, diagnostics and troubleshooting and networking. It's also a tool for hackers to pretty much spread across a network, spray across packets to find open ports on things. It's a, it's a port scanner, basically. I mean, I'm sure it's more than that. I'm not a network expert, but it's, it is useful in that uh, use case. So first thing I'm gonna do is run ifconfig so I can see what's my IP. So my IP is .7, okay? And now I have to copy this because I cannot remember the syntax of nmap. Uh, I'm gonna paste this in, I'm gonna fix this to .7. So we're gonna say, hey, shh, shh, oh, I can't do this, I'm not root. I did that on purpose. So see. Um, because I'm root and I have nmap, it is scanning and sure enough we found two ports for port, port 5000 we saw that before the the service that's running on the web app that we started with is running on on 5000 
and we see two of them now. Interesting. Let's go back over to our our um, console for the. There, okay, so here's the the web facing the 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 internet facing web app is at dot one dot four is its IP address, and we're seeing five thousand come up dot, because that's this one, but we also see a dot five, which is not this. It's not the my sneaky container, and it's not the one we saw. So somebody else is running something on port five thousand in this network segment in this cluster basically so um i'd like to know what that is because it sounds like somebody might be running another copy of the app it's not in the secure net uh namespace because we'd see it if it was a pod running there um or we'd see a scale you know we'd see multiple pods uh scaled up so uh let's update our uh, what we know so we now know that there's another pod probably uh running in this cluster port 5000 outside we don't know where it is. We know it's not insecure. Um, now, one of the things we know, based on the fact that I was able to get those images and the fact that I was able to run Nmap, is we probably don't, we either don't have any network controls in place or they're, they're way loose and they need to be tightened up. Uh, so just take that to note. So what I'm going to do is, in this sneaky container... I'm going to run SoCat, which is a socket cat. It's a, you know, whatever. It, you use it for, for tunneling, usually. That's what I use it for. So I'm going to use it to tunnel any traffic coming into the sneaky container on 5001. And it's going to spit that traffic out. Let me fix this IP to the this rant in this new pod that we're finding, right? Okay, so that's set up. And now I'm going to go back to my terminal. <laughs> So we're going back out of the cluster now and we're still port forwarding here i'm going to background that oops back to type okay and i'm going to start another port forward port forward in the secure namespace and we're going to forward to sneaky again on port 5001 right right okay start that up and let's go back to our browser open another tab localhost 5001 well look at that it is the same app amazed uh so somebody else is running another copy of this app on another port that's not part of that secure deployment uh secure namespace deployment let's see if we can send a command to it let's see if it's, if it's exploited or exploitable env sure enough it is so this is cool so now we know we have um this rogue vulnerable application somewhere else let's go back to our notes and we know we can tunnel into it we can get to it good to know so what can we do with that <sighs> seems to be the ongoing question what can we do with that and let's come back to this tab and we're going to change this. I want to grab the service account token in that. I'm going to call it the unknown app. Okay. The unknown apps token. I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to go back to my terminal. And I'm going to kill this tunnel. Don't need it right now. I'm going to edit, though, my cube config. I'm just going to do it manually. And we'll go to the bottom and we're going to comment out the token from the original app. And we're going to replace it with this new token. And let's, let's see if we can pull up anything with here. Ooh, I can pull default. I can pull default. Uh, we see web admin that it's the same app, obviously. Uh, I can pull my pods from the default namespace. That's, that's cool. So let's, well, let's find out what else we can do. Auth. Can I list token equals that i have full access in the default uh namespace to do all these verbs so that's golden uh that's pretty cool so let, let's go back uh we now know it's in the default let's try to run something in the default namespace should be able to now right so we're going to go back to my shell and given that now we have that new token, I'm just going to apply 
int from the demo YAMLs. Um, non root. Let's go for gold here. Okay, get pod. Let's see if it's starting. That's that's pretty cool. Let's let's exec into that pod. It into the non root priv. Run bash. Okay. Who am I? I'm sneaky. That's good. Remember what we can do with sneaky? We can become root. Now, do you remember this this YAML we looked at earlier? This is a privileged container. I am now running a privileged container in the default namespace in this cluster, and I'm root. Um, if you know anything about how Linux <laughs> uh, stuff works, well, actually, I'll give away. Uh, let's do a PS. Um, so I can only see the processes in the container, right? Well, if you know how it works, you can do root. Now, if you remember from that YAML, I'm mounting the root file system into a file system or a, a mount point in my container named root. And now, if I if I change my root to that, I can I am effectively on the host. I'm root on the host. Um, so I'm now basically in control of a worker node. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of it's like wow. Okay, that's bad. Uh, what am I going to do from here? Um, well, let's see what else we can do on that node. So I'm going to, I need to get, I need to set up a, the cube config. We're going to Kubernetes, sure, there it is. And the kubelets have to live on the nodes, right? So kube, I can't use my aliases here. Uh, get pods. Let's go for gusto here. Let's see if we can actually get to the control panel. Or control plane, sorry. Yes. Yes, I can. Um, heck. And there's my nodes. The fact that um, I could do that tells me there's no restrictions in the default namespace. So we confirmed our suspicion before when we said, ah, pod security policy probably set up by the developers for their namespace. Yeah, it looks like it. And now I can get in. I'm in, you know, I'm in default and I'm kind of, you know, the, I'm a kid in the candy store now. So... And we now are in the kube system um, uh, namespace. And what lives in kube system? Etcd. So let's see if we can get at that. Uh, so let's go back here. And the first thing I'm going to try to do, let's try to run kube ctl. Let's see if I can run something in here that I can then use as a launch vector. Uh, busy box image busy box you start equal never and let's show don't oh, can't do that so kublet uh token is is not allowed to start up um uh, it's not allowed to start up a pod in the in kube system it's just it's, 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 a, it's a security restriction is built in it's, it's good um, but, but honestly, it, it's, it's kind of, okay, I can't do that, but I could do this. Kubernetes manifests. I could, um, no, it's nothing here now. I could add a static pod, which can do basically the same thing. Uh, if I'm wanting to start a pod as the kublet in, with that kind of access, I could do it that way. Um, let's not do that. Let's, uh, I'm going to get out and we're going to do something different. So I also have an etcd manifest that can deploy an etcd client. Let's take a look. There it is. It's creating. We are going to do a member list. That tells us we are connected to the etcd server, or we can. So we're cooking with gas, as they say, right? If I can get to etcd uh, from, the, from the default uh, namespace, from a worker pod. Um, what can I find out? What What's in SCD? <laughs> what isn't in SCD, right? Uh, but one of the most famous things people like to look for in SCD are secrets. And there's a specific secret I'm interested in here. And I want to get... Let me see if I can find it. Um, there you are. 
controller role, cluster role aggregation controller token. There's a token that is interesting. What can you do with that token, do you think? Um, well, let's find out. Copy that. And now I'm going to do K okay, auth. Can I list token equal that? I'm root. I, I have the admin. I have admin, basically. I can do whatever I want um, in the cluster. I have the cluster token, basically. So, um, I mean, there's not a, lot, not a lot more to say there. Once you get to that point, once you have cluster admin rights, you know, it's, it's game over. Um, there's, <laughs> there's no further real, not much more I have to say. So how could we have prevented all of this? Well, obviously the vulnerability in that application is the most glaring issue and scanning your application and its libraries is the first thing you'd probably want to tackle so that you're not actually deploying applications with these kind of vulnerabilities in them in the first place. Next, scanning your container images is critical for similar reasons. Vulnerabilities brought in from a base image or operating system level packages that you might be building your, into your images can introduce some of the same kind of exploit possibilities. Finally, making sure your Kubernetes settings are hardened against the kinds of things we talked about today not only adds another layer of protection against vulnerabilities that slip, slip through or may still be zero day or something, but it also serves as a great way to train your teams on these tactics and to help foster a culture of security. Now, of course, Sneak offers scanning for all of these things and more. Go sign up for your free account at sneak.io and take a look at it today. Before I wrap up, I wanted to give a shout out to the Kubernetes security community. One of the great things about working with Kubernetes is how generous the community of contributors are. And much of the content that we've put together to build this talk is gathered by research done by our friends and colleagues. In particular, we wanna give special thanks to Mark Manning, Ian Coldwater, Duffy Cooley, as well as all our friends in the Kubernetes SIG security, meetups, and book clubs. Thanks again for listening, and we can't wait to see you at the next talk.